We're back to the main topic, All right? So we're talking about presenting at the speed of trust, and uh, I'll explain why why that topic. So a little bit of background of, about myself. Um, as I say, I think the handwriting in office is something I just do in my spare time for. It's, it's for party fun. Uh, what I what I do in a professional sense is Wendy will will not agree. Wendy will say that uh, I'll, I'll I'll make a good fucking teller. Um, if I ever lose my job, yes, I'll probably consider that. My day job is I I blog regularly on LinkedIn. I I facilitate. I can sell. I coach. I do keynotes in English and Mandarin, Chinese. Um, from so for the 2020, I was based out of Shanghai. You know, I'm back in Singapore. I'm obviously a Singaporean. I uh, tend to like to be a more outcomes focused and loves to cook um, just to um, impress a point upon Wendy again. And uh, in, in terms of assessment, so besides the handwriting analysis, I do also a lot of uh, more professional, more scientific assessments. I've created a assessment called sales map if you are looking at sales proficiency. And because I've been spending 16 years in, in China, there is the book to summarize the experiences that I had in China and uh, some of the finds are right below, right? So enough of me, more so to the topic. So um, now this is um, a speaker's association and we are doing speeches, we're doing presentations. So whether you're a speaker or a trainer or someone who makes regular presentations, whether internally to your colleagues or externally, uh, to customers of the wider audience, the question that all presenters make will be, how do I create greater resonance with my audience? How can I make my audience relate more to me, buy into my ideas, and eventually allow me to persuade them, to bring them to where both of us want to go, right? So that's, that's the resonance. So if we break it down, and this is not about the usual presentation skills as in how what you should do this is a lot to think about your presentation as a whole so when you start off before you even go into presentation when you plan for your presentation so we start off with the audience and the reason that we are talking about the audience is that there's got to be some outcomes that the audience would like to achieve and uh, and of course, the reason that you are being engaged as a presenter, it's usually the audience would like to engage a speaker, presenter, someone whose brains can be picked on to share some ideas and ways of doing things to get to the outcomes, right? If the audience could do it themselves, then there's no need to hire you. So they need to hire a speaker to bring some outcomes for them. So that's how, how presentations tend to go forward. Now, while we are talking about outcomes, besides what outcomes, what is at the end of the day, what do the audience want to get, want to understand, want to find out, that's the what. There is also some contextual information as in why does the audience want to have this? Now, if we were to talk about, uh, say, a typical speech on staff retention, right? So we want to motivate our, our team. We want to retain our staff. We want to have our staff to be more engaged at work. So that's the one. That's about making our staff to stay longer, be more productive, and contribute more to our teams, to our organizations, to our goals. So that's, that's the one. Now the question is, what prompted them to have this topic in the first place. Do, do they, are they facing some lower morale at the moment? Are they facing some issues about working from home, working remotely, and we need to get people to be more focused on goals and be more engaged? Are we going on a next phase in growth? Some companies are going for an IPO for the next page and go and we really, really need people to be fully hands-on and fully committed to get things done. So what is the context? What is the wider context behind the reasons why? If you don't find out the reasons why, then it will be difficult for you, it will be a lot more challenging for you to try to design your speech or a presentation according 
to the context of that situation, right? So in terms of outcomes, we can understand the outcomes by, by saying that, you no, know, what would you want your audience to do or think differently at the end of the presentation, right? What is it about um, your presentation that want to make them kind of reflect upon what they have been doing? Or you may have some ideas that will help them get a better result, or it will be some things that they may want to explore to do further, right? So either they change something, actions, or they have some aha moments and say, hmm, why didn't I think about this earlier? Maybe we should do things a little bit differently um, moving forward. So this, this is about getting the audience to do something differently or think differently at the end of the presentation. Now, we mentioned about why is it important to them? What is the situation they are in? What is the, you can call it the urgency or the context of it all? You know, what is the greater context? And how do you know if I've reached there? How do you know if I've succeeded? Right? Is there something that in a presentation that you let the audience know that, hey, if I do this, 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 and this, my audience are maybe they're going to take some actions, maybe they'll change the way of thinking, and maybe I know that something happened, and that's not when I know my message had gone across and I and I have succeeded. Right. So those are outcomes aspects. Now we have probably heard about the book called Start with Why. So we have the why. We wrap what, but before we get to the how, is actually the who, because we're talking about speakers, we're talking about presenters. So the next question is, why you? What is it that you bring to the table being the presenter? Now, notice that a lot of your information that you would like to share probably can be found somewhere, right? They either can be found somewhere on the internet, they can be found in books. They might, you might have used an email or some messaging to let the other person know that, hey, this is what you need to do. But there's something about you, of you being there to convey the message, to connect to the audience that make people resonate to the message. It could be your past experiences. It could be your personality. It could be just uh, some common experiences that you and the audience may have, something that you mix it allow, something that allows you to make a greater connection and resonance with the audience. So that's that's something to think about that there's something about you that makes the, the audience want to engage you. And on the other hand, if sometimes you no, know, if if you are a professional speaker, I view the uh, Sometimes we don't get selected for some keynotes. It may not be the case of you are not good enough. It could be you absolutely got, have got the skills and knowledge to deliver uh, the speech and the presentation. But sometimes the organizers may feel that, hey, um, maybe you're not the right person. We are looking for someone else that can relate to them better, right? It could be the new factor why you are the most suitable, we're not saying the best, but the most suitable medium of that messaging. So think about why you uh, to be that presenter for that occasion. On the other hand, the who question, we are also looking into who are you presenting to? And there are different personas in the, the whole presentation. There could be, if you're, if you're presenting to purchasing managers, you know, purchasing managers are always looking at how do I manage total like purchasing expenditure and mitigate organizational risk? How do I make sure that this is a good purchasing decision for the, for the company, for the organization? If you are reaching out to engineering and R&D, these sort of techie people, they're looking at quality, cost, and delivery. 
or if you're looking at project managers, so they are they're, they're always thinking along the lines of what is the scope? What are the deadlines? What budgets do I have to maintain and what qualities do I have to meet? Or finance can be compliance issues, financial performances, all the way to top managers was talking about strategic development. So who is in the audience? What outcomes do they want to have for themselves personally, in addition to the outcomes they want to have for their organizations? So that's the who factor. And in addition, in addition to that is, of course, how are we going to deliver the outcomes? Right? How are we going to structure that presentation or that speech so that the audience really get what you are trying to relate to them? Now, the how depends also a lot on what outcomes and who they are. So there could be at some point in time, we are talking about operational outcomes, day-to-day -day operational things. And if you are doing this for an external client, if you are looking at uh, operational outcomes, they will be more focused at, uh, at things like how-to tips, right? Um, actual case studies, how it's being done, process-driven, um, examples of how others did it. So this is this are uh, this are some of the outcomes when people are uh, focusing on operational issues and the uh, how needs to relate to the outcomes. On the other hand, um, it could be a presentation or a speech about strategic outcomes. So when it comes to strategic outcomes, these will be issues about the future in the next one to two years, in the next three to five years, what is the overall direction? What is, how should we allocate our resources? How should we steer the direction overall in that future? And how are we going to gain buy-in throughout the organization to, uh, towards this particular direction, right? In terms of strategic outcomes, the how, tends to go forward in terms of the thinking aspects, as in we get people to clarify what's important for us now. What are some of the things that we need to change now? And if we need to change, what are some of the things that we need to change into for that future? And what happens if we don't make the change? And also, how are we going to make the change? So these are these are the thinking things and natural things um, that is part of the presentation. It may go into facilitation because there's a, there could be a lot of drawing up from the audience about what are the future goals, what are the options, what do they um, want to end up with, and why. So so those are some of the strategic outcomes questions. If this were to be a keynote speech then again, it's about painting the future possible picture, right? Also, it could also be painting a stark and not so nice picture of what will happen if nothing is done or changed, and then bring people to a brighter future in that keynote. So that's strategic outcomes. Some people will say that, you know, does it mean that as a professional speaker, I will be paid more for strategic outcomes than for operational outcomes if that's the topic of the speech or presentation. In a short answer, the answer is usually yes. If you are talking to people of a higher senior uh, level people, yes, they focus a lot more on strategic outcomes. They have a higher uh, expectations about the speaker and as a result, they may be willing to invest more, but there's always a caveat in everything. So there could be large conferences of many people. We're talking about 500, 1,000, or thousands of people that are focused on operational how to, but you are really impacting on a lot of people. It might even be live streamed around the world. And who knows if you're really good at that? that can actually allow you to demand higher fees as well. So in a nutshell, it could be strategic outcomes to get a better payout, but 
not always pays. And on top of that, these days, for a lack of a better word, there are presentations that focus on self-actualization outcomes. These are presentations and speeches that target at who do you want to be? So these could be for senior level executives and it could be for managers of all levels or even for individual contributors. It's about finding your internal why. Why do I exist? Where do I want to go? What kind of person do I want to become? So the, those, are, those, those kind of topics tend to go deep into the reflective mode, deep into questioning and possibly clarifying your value systems and looking into what really matters to you as a person the most. And even if we are talking about presenting to corporates, corporates these days are really focusing a lot on talent development, not just about the talent that can be used by the company, but the talent that is innate in that person that could be unleashed and bring that person's uh, potential to the next level. And speaking of which, coming back to Wendy, there is a hidden talent in Wendy of maybe she wants to be an artist. We will come to that, that later. Right? So that, those are the self-actualization ones. What's important to you inherently? What are the values you hold close to your heart? And eventually, what will be the person that you want to be, you know, that you want to become and what will be a better version of yourself? Now, the thing is that these are all the how-to things you can present stuff to the audience. But the question is, what makes my audience possible that I can deliver all these expected outcomes? Why does my message matter to this audience? So we're going to talk a little bit about the trust and the trust equation. So the yeah, trust, you probably have seen this many, many times. Trust is the function of your credibility, as in, do you really know what they are talking? Do, we, do you really know the subject matter on hand? And of course, are you stating the truth? That's, that's um, both aspects of credibility. The other thing is about reliability. Can I count on you to get things done? So um, although you may just be delivering a speech or a presentation, what goes into the planning and communicating with the key stakeholders prior to that presentation or speech. So it, it, it's about how you carry yourself and how you manage your relationship with key sponsors in, in that presentation. And of course, the intimacy, how well do you know each other? How frequent are your communication? How open are your communication? And the little bit of things that you know about each other, the greater the trust will be. And of course, at the end of it all, it's about your self-interest. If you are, are you focusing all about you? Is this a stage for you to sell the world and, and promote itself, which turns people off? Or is this a stage or a platform that focus a lot more about what the audience can achieve, can be, and want to know a little bit more about themselves. So that's, that's the uh, trust equation that we are all familiar with. Now the question is, how do you make this trust equation that looks nice on paper and put it into a kind of an action plan? So in terms of actions, you put that trust equation into four things you need to know about building trust with your audience, with the sponsors, with people in general. So the first thing is about, you know, show you care. Don't just be too overly self-centered about yourself. It's, it is your speech. Yes, that's true. It is your presentation. It's your baby. It's your ideas. It's your content. We get that. But the thing is, how does your content deliver the outcomes for your audience? That's the main thing. So it's about showing you care about the outcomes, about how they feel, about what are the objectives that they want to achieve. So, okay. Two is 
you need to show that you can, both in terms of the feasibility of your ideas. Does it really work? And of course, if you are going to be presenting something, if you are going to be that speaker, how are you performing on stage? Are you able to communicate clearly and have that resonance with your audience? That's the, the can time. You may want to show a portfolio of your previous presentation, some show reels and so on to your potential customers and audience. The third is about keeping touch. We talk about intimacy. So the presentation, the speech, it's not just that one-off thing. A lot of the speakers that I know, professional speakers, and a lot of the really senior uh, facilitators that I know of, even senior coaches that I know of, spend a lot of time communicating with key stakeholders prior to the event, prior to delivering a workshop or a coaching. Uh, that keeping in touch is having that open communication and open communication with different levels of stakeholders so that both parties are clear in terms of the expectations. They are clear in terms of how they measure those expectations. And eventually that leads to a successful or effective presentation and speech eventually. And last but not least, you know, uh, whether you are a, a friend, a colleague, a speaker, a presenter, Whatever it is, it's about keeping your word. I mean, if you're not able to deliver, tell people there's something you can do, there's something you could not do, and just be frank about it. Uh, the one, one negative thing that I found in some speaking circles and some trainers and the facilitator circles is sometimes people are just so wanting to net the deal, to get that case, to get hired that whatever the customer asks them, they'll say, yes, I can do that. I can do everything you want and eventually fall short of what they can do. So it's a matter of, if you're able to do it, sure, that's great. If you're not able to do it, tell people so. If you are not sure, you're somewhere in between, it's like you probably can do half of it and the other half, you are not quite sure. Just tell people you're not quite sure and that you probably will need more information, more communication with the client, with key stakeholders to make a final decision if you are able to do it. Right. So whatever it is, if you need to do more fact finding, more communication, just go do it and don't make promises that you can't keep. In fact, uh, the old adage is, adage is that uh, you always under promise and over deliver and not the other way around. And that's about keeping your word. So last but not least, when, when you are presenting, again, it's about who you are. So are you present with the audience? Are you able to present your energy levels that goes to in sync with the audience's energy level and connect with them? Sometimes when we do presentations, we could be overly focused on the content that we want to present and we forget about people don't want content. They want you. They, they might want some insight from you, your perspective, but eventually what they really want is some connection with you. That's why you are hired as a presenter or a speaker or a facilitator in the first place. So when presenting, be present. Right, so with that, what's a key takeaway today? And while we are talking about key takeaway, that's my LinkedIn uh, throughout code, and uh, I'll leave it to our host, maybe to talk about key takeaways. If you've got questions, please leave them. If you've got comments, I'd love to hear them as well. And um, yeah, we talk about the potentials of Wendy and yourself as well. If you want to find out more, please do uh, scan. We'll be in touch and put me on LinkedIn. Over to you, Wendy. Okay, thank you so much, CJ. So, question. Open up to the floor. Any questions for CJ? While you are adding him on the LinkedIn, it would be nice if you could just help put in a few good words for CJ. <laughs> Thank you so much.
Any questions from the floor? Everyone is so quiet. Yeah. So are you Did thinking... you have a question? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm sure all of us know some strategies for creating creating that connection with the audience. Yeah. What do you th What do you think are the ones that are that you think are really important and useful for? You know, just creating that sense of connection that you're that you're present. You know, the, the presence you're talking about. What do you think works really well? That is a great question, Jamie. And a lot of times there, there are a lot of presentation techniques to say that this is what we need to do in terms of how you stand, how you make eye contact, and, and so on and so forth. But that's besides the point. The point is always focused on the responses and the reactions of the audience. And if the responses are kind of quiet, kind of low energy, you can always raise questions to find out how is everybody feeling? Is that something that raises concerns that you have about the topic? Is that something that I say that you don't feel comfortable? So it's about having that resonance with the audience. And yeah. even when delivering keynotes, I, I do understand the keynotes, largely it's going to be a one way delivery most of the time. But even to that extent, uh, there's no harm in giving, making a few questions to check with the audience about how, how what are they feeling and, and how are they, what, what's, their, what's their chemistry, so to speak, with, with regards to the topic or with regards to the whole context. Yeah. So, so it's really, really about empathy, you know, not, not some sort of uh, cerebral, you know, matching and all that sort of stuff, but actually just empathizing, what, wondering, mm -hmm. wondering what they may be feeling, why they may be quiet and reaching out to that. Mm -hmm. sounds like. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you, you, you bang on in terms of empathy. It's just that uh, I didn't use the word empathy again. It's, it's a word that I like. It's just that it sometimes is overly abused. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, uh, just focus on the audience and be mindful about what they're doing and saying and, and sometimes relate to them about how, yeah. how they feel about the whole thing. Yeah, no, great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. It's interesting to see what Bruce uh, has written on the uh, chat box. She's, he's just finished a latest book on crafting a killer keynote. And Ooh, a lot wow. of your message is similar to what he uh, thought, uh, what, what, what he wrote as well. So good to know that. Uh, you know, both of you are on the right path. Oh, wow. Well, 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 great. <laughs> I, I think, Bruce, I think the, the relief is on me, not on you. So if you're, craft, if you're writing a book about crafting a killer keynote, then you probably are going to be my <clears throat> reference point. So it, it's the relief is on me that I didn't say something that is out of place. So thank you for that um, affirmation and validation. Any other questions? CJ, my question is, uh, where does a uh, vulnerability figure in your scheme of things or in our scheme of things as speakers? Mm -hmm. Like if well, I'm going to talk to people uh, for my connect with them, it is very important that they should accept me as one of them and not as someone who is superior to them. Yes. Yes, and um, part of it is, is where I say, you know, who, who is going to be a speaker? Why you? And you just mentioned about you know, how the audience can relate to you as if they feel you to be one of them, although not entirely one of them, because you are going to bring some insights that they never have thought of or they never have see things that way before. So, and as, as a result, there, there, there are certain perspectives that we bring over there. There are certain perspectives, when we talk about vulnerability, there are certain aspects that if you sense in the audience that they don't really get it or they don't really buy into what you're saying, you can always pause and check the temperature. The vulnerability can also be what I said earlier about certain topics, if you're not fully comfortable, or you want to find more about the context of your presentation, the, the context behind 
their outcomes and you want to have more communication with key stakeholders before you, you go on to your presentations. Those are signs of vulnerability in my view that you are saying that, hey, I may have some ideas, I may have good, some good content, I may bring some of my insights, but before I say any of that, maybe I'd like to hear your story. Maybe I'd like to find out more about you and more about your situation and, and what uh, you're thinking or feeling right now, the empathy part, and be humble enough to uh, get inputs or feedback or requirements uh, from the, the audience before and during uh, the, that presentation. So, uh, yeah, so I don't know if that uh, answers the, uh, the question. Okay, uh, CJ, would you like to unshare your slides so that we can see your face a little bit bigger? Sure. <laughs> Yay. Hey. All right, is there more, no more questions?